you came from a marketing and business development background yeah. in, the, in the software industry and now you can use these skills um, oh, yeah. for, real, for community building. And, and it's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, it, it was something that I enjoy doing is the marketing business development. So starting an organization wasn't daunting. Um, it was daunting to learn how to run a nonprofit and what that meant and to get it started. But I sort of knew what we needed to ha what needed to happen to make it um, come alive. Mm -hmm. And it's been seven years now, and uh, it's been on a constant growth every year. And um, we have some, hopefully, some big plans for the next few years. So yeah, it's been really great. And we we work um, on, along the Charles River. Um, we work also with other organizations like Mass Bike and Livable Streets, and um, these are mostly adult members. Right. But there are not many places where children can actually learn to become bicyclists, where they can learn to become safe users right. of the street. Yeah. And so I think you are filling a very important need to introduce kids to to be out in the street. Uh, uh, I remember when I had small children, many mothers and fathers oh, yeah. would just drive their kids everywhere. That seems to be um, such a, an established pattern and it would be so much easier if the kids could bicycle with their parents or then can bicycle by themselves. Right, and a lot of what we do is we help parents feel that their children are learning how to you know, be safe when riding. Um, you know how to pay attention to you know cars and just to you know pedestrians. So that as they're riding their bikes, they're learning sort of the rules of the road. Um, and so I think you know this education in the schools has helped parents to feel more comfortable letting their child go out and ride alone without them. Yeah, that's the feedback we've been receiving. Yeah, you know, so it's been. So when you are, for instance, you go to the Moore School, which is near Magazine Beach. Yeah. Um, so you. Do you go to the Charles River and what would be then the next step? Would you then actually go into the road or do you stay on the pathway along the Charles? Um, most of the times the children will ride along the pathway, but where the police really have helped out, um, the Cambridge police have been great, sometimes they'll you know close a block to traffic um, so that they can take the kids around the schoolyard, around the school building rather, so they can actually practice being on the road, riding near parked cars, um, you know, using their hand signals, stopping, using the hand signal to stop when they come to a stop sign. And what's interesting is a lot of kids, because it's a fifth grade, fourth and fifth grade, when they take one hand off the bike to do their hand signals, they're not steady, right? So they mm -hmm. have to practice, just, even the children that know how to ride a bike, they really need to practice being steady on the bike as well. Um, so it gives them a chance, it gives the children a chance to see where their skills are and where they can also improve. Yeah, so. and, and there is now a new program but is in Boston and will also be coming to Cambridge, the Hubway yeah. um, program. And we hope to have that program um, in Cambridge where you can um, go to one of the places where these bicycles are stored. You put in your, your credit card or your membership card yeah. and you borrow a bicycle and then you might go to the river or you might go to a meeting. I know you, you have seen this program in, in Paris. Yeah, it's a wonderful program. Yeah, and I'm always amazed when I'm in Paris at how many people, you know, that are dressed up, that's not just like tourists or, you know, people casually dressed, but people that are on their way to work with their suits, their briefcases. I even saw a woman one time in a long fur coat heading out on one of those bikes. Um, you know, she was off to, I'm not sure where, but she has all dressed up and, you know, she was going off on her bike. It was really fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we have a few more images of the, um, of the, what, how um, those um, pathways along the river could look like. This again is the Anderson Bridge. And this is a sketch also by David Smith of um, the River Street Bridge. Um, as you, as you might have experienced, the River Street Bridge, when you come from the Boston um, near the hotel there. It's very narrow. You Bikes can hardly pass each other. And so to be able to go through the abutment um, on, on, a, on a way that um, makes you not have to, to fight the traffic, I think, would be a wonderful way. Um, there you might also have seen 
this um, op-ed piece by Renee Loth, uh, The Charles Rivers Bridge to the Future. Um, she um, is uh, a writer who uh, mentions both obesity and uh, the importance of people to be able to bicycle and run along the river. So they are, uh, from many different angles, uh, oh, yeah. people are looking at that. Yeah. And there are actually um, a lot of groups um, that support the one that is bicycle, bicycle kids, cycle kids that support that. And there are um, 31 organizations that support the underpasses and um, 28 elected officials. And that includes all the city councillors of Cambridge or the Boston City Council also has voted on it. That's really the, wonderful, Renata. You've done a lot of great work. Well, now we need to, to translate that advocacy yeah. um, into uh, make sure that the uh, mass DOT actually does those underpasses. So um, it's important yeah. that groups ha like yours um, can show that it's not just um, some young men in spandex who want to bicycle along the river, <laughs> but there is a whole new generation. No, I mean, to me, I see it as building community. Um, I mean, one of the things that we found in the Cycle Kids class, when we do the feedback, um, the, when we you know, assess what the kids are learning, it's actually being on the bike is building community. You know, they make new friends, they meet people, it gets them outside. Um, you know, and having the option of being on the river and to be able to do these loops, I mean, people are going to be out, they'll be meeting more people, it'll be, again, another effort just to build community with each other. It's interesting you mentioned work to building community. Yeah. We we often feel at the Conservancy that the work we do with we having 2,500 volunteers do landscaping and people out there landscaping and then others walk by or bicycle by and, and thank our volunteers yeah. for the work it they do. It develops the conversation between people. It does. And you know it's there's I mean that's just a fabulous thing. I mean we're so isolated in our worlds of technology with our cell phones and our Twitters and our Facebook and to get outside and be outside doing something active and meeting people, I mean, that's lost from a lot of lives now. And you know what you're offering with the work you do along the river is a way for people to be outside and to connect and to get to you know make new friends or see old friends or or just to be out in the environment, which is really really important for any community to be successful. Yeah, and there's one example along the Charles that. Um, we are very, um, very proud of and that we love, and that's River Sing. Yeah. And it's something that the Conservancy started, and then it has now become part of the annual calendar of revels. It's the celebration mm -hmm. at the Weeks Bridge, where thousands of people gather to sing together and form a community yeah. to, to, welcome, to welcome the fall. So um, yeah. uh, that's, I think, to the river lends itself very well for feeling being part of a community. Oh, absolutely it does. And we're so blessed. I mean, the Charles River is a beautiful river. I happen to live along it here in Cambridge. And, you know, every morning for the past almost 25 years, I've, I get up in the morning and the first thing I do is I look at the river to see what the weather's going to be. I see the crew teams rowing by, I see people running, I see people biking. I mean, it's just so alive, you know, and it reflects the day. I mean, if it's a bright sunny day, it's bright and happy. If it's a gray day, it's a little darker. I mean, it's just so alive. It's yeah. such a big part of our community. Yeah. And there's going to be another place um, along the river where um, BMX bikes will be able to, to do their tricks. Um, we are now working with the Department of Conservation and Recreation on building the skate park under the Zakem Bridge. That's awesome, Renata. That's really great. And um, so there's kids not will love that. <laughs> kids will love that. Well, there will be skateboarders. There will be inline skaters, um, as well as BMX bikers. Yeah. So some of the kids that come through the Cycle Kids program, they might become BMX bikers. Oh yeah. Um, and they will be there. This will be a, a, a very big facility, one of the biggest on the East Coast. And um, so th we are building that. We have worked on that. We raised uh, money for that skate park. So we congratulations. That's some. wonderful. That's really great. So that will be a, a further extension for bringing an activity to the river mm -hmm. that um, and bringing people outside. Be yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I, I have a son, and I would take him to um, do in, uh, inline skating and skateboarding. 
and after half an hour he was completely exhausted and happy. So it's a wonderful way of getting exercise in a very oh, yeah. intensive form. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it is. That's yeah. great. Well, we'll be, we're coming um, to the end of our program and I want to make sure that um, you have a chance and that might be a bit dark on your television screen, but if you want to see, um, know more about the underpasses, um, our website is thecharles.org. And you can actually also um, sign up as a supporter um, of the underpasses um, and show that you would like to see that happening. And, um, and I would um, like to thank you for, for bringing that to Cambridge. Cambridge is the first city yeah. um, that we piloted. Cycle, it's the pilot city. It was our pilot city. We started piloting um, programs in the school system here in 2005. And those programs are still active. And uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a great experience. The city has been wonderful in helping um, develop the program with me. Um, and give me the feedback as to how we can make it even better. So we're yeah. very fortunate to be here. Yeah, and it's interesting that you always also not just have the physical, the athletic component, but it, you also bring in the academic component. Mm -hmm. because oh, the bike is a great tool to get kids to think about. Um, well, an example is some of the English language learners. They're so excited about their experience with riding a bike. Um, and they turn to their friends so they can tell you what's going on and they'll ask them how they can say something in English because they can't tell me. Like if I go to a class just to visit, um, you'll see them really practicing and trying and you know it's always hard to try to speak a new language and not you know being afraid that you're not using the right words and it's not going to come out right. But these kids they forget the fear because they're so happy with riding a bike and being outside with their friends that they, you know, they ask their friends yeah. how can they can tell me about it. So well, fun. thank you, Julie. Thank you for starting that program. And You're welcome, um, Renata. Thank uh, you for having me today. Yeah, and so I will go back to um, the information. So in case you want to learn more about the underpasses, um, go there to that site. And thank you for, for joining us. And this show will be on YouTube. Um, on the Charles River Conservancy's website as well. Thank you very much.